Hello and welcome back. So in this episode we're going to continue with our little character creator. Um, I'm sure by now you've gone on from the last lesson and created a lot more sliders to do a lot more things. And yes, I'm sure you've created much prettier UI than I've got. But uh, we're going to move on now and uh, look at changing colours. So, um, the first thing I want to do is head into our character creator script. Let's head down to the bottom and add a new method. Um, so we'll call this public void and we'll call this change, in fact let's spell that right, change skin color. Okay, um, and we'll make this method take in, much like our belly change and height change take a float in, we'll take in obviously a color. Uh, so there's a color and we'll call this call okay now the guts inside here we've done before so no no explanation needed um so we'll say avatar dot set color and we will give our shared color name if you remember from our shared colors we had skin and i'm going to pass in the actual color itself that comes into our method and finally, as always, we need to build our character. Um, I'm going to do something slightly different here. It would be absolutely fine for you to put avatar build character. But to shave a few um, milliseconds off the actual build, uh, this build character actually does three things. It builds the mesh, it builds the overlay, and it then colorizes it. Well, we can miss the first two steps when we're changing color. So, a low avatar build character here would be absolutely fine if we want to be super efficient we can say avatar um, and we can say what am I looking for update colors there we are avatar update colors and in here we'll say true if we don't put the true in our brackets it won't force it to rebuild but this is just marginally quicker than building okay um, we'll hit save and that's ready to go so if we push a color into this method um, that should change the skin of our avatar now we could um, yeah we could subscribe to something that's going to do that uh, I tell you what let's create the UI first so let's have a little look at our scene um, and what I'm going to do there are a lot of color selector assets on the asset store there's some really good free ones as well but they're a little bit of overkill for this series because I want to keep this as simple as possible so what you will find is I've got a little script um, called image color picker uh, it's really quite small but this is a little control that allows us to click and get a color from an image um, in our UI so just download that there's some instructions at the top um, and paste it into your project okay so um, back to our scene I'm going to start by adding a new image so a UI image uh, let's put that up here and we will set it to anchor to the top left lovely and I've also in the description to this video um, left a link to a little color swatch that I've created um, you can use any image you like with this little script however you must make sure when you import the image you have it as a sprite and you have this read write checkbox enabled that allows my clicks to register what color is underneath the cursor okay so as long as you have that set up this should work um, so I'm going to pick my image I'm going to take my skin tones over here um, and again I'm just going to hit set native size this will work whatever size that is um, as long as your image completely fills the rectangle it will still work um, where the only condition where it won't work is if you use this preserve aspect and you have empty portions inside your rect um, I haven't managed to work out how to sort that out yet but if you just make sure you resize manually everything should work beautifully okay um, so that's just a plain image all I need to do is add my image color picker onto there and as you can see it just gives an event um, it also has a color exposed and this is just like any other control uh, you can see this event sends out a color so we could either subscribe to this uh, in the same way we have up here on enable or on disable 
um, just for variety let's do it the other way around so in this image color picker I'm going to add my character okay and I'm going to select from my character creator our newly created skin uh, color changer there we go okay so it's going to pass the color into that routine so all being well this should just work let's press play and there we go any color I click on will be reflected as a change on my Uma that easy really really straightforward so like I say you can add whatever you like in there okay so let's uh, let's just tidy this up by um, let's take this belly text duplicate it pop it down here and we'll just change the text that we've got there let's call this text skin lovely and let's alter that so that it says skin color there we go lovely right so we've got a label on so just before we move on to the next item I want to quickly show you something which I'm not going to use but you may find useful um, so in here we have set our skin color but what if you wanted to get a shared color from an UMA model um, pretty easy to do so the way we would do it we would say avatar dot get color which is great and we would say which color we want dot color and that's it um, obviously this is going to do nothing so let's wrap that in a in a debug log statement so uh, debug dot log okay and wrap that up but this little line here does return a color from your model so with this in mind if we run now what should happen is we should see our color appear in the console and there we go this is being read from the model not from here so you could load a model in and collect what colors it's using so that's really handy if you want to be a little bit more advanced than I am okay so next um, I want to have a look at changing slots using the UI uh, now in a character creator the obvious thing to do with this is the hair slots um, you may have noticed that during a pause there I actually took my hair models off um, so I'm not going to have any hair models to begin with um, and I think it should start this time maybe by creating the UI so what I'm going to do I'm going to have a list of different hair models that we can use I'm going to have a plus and minus button that will cycle through them okay so let's start with uh, our canvas let's create a new button so that's this one here let's dock it up there and again make it top left anchored and let's make this a square button and put it back where I want it there we go um, and let's quickly change the text we'll have this one as a minus button we'll duplicate it uh, shift it along change the text and put a plus in there so we've got a plus and a minus button and just to finish this off and keep it tidy let's give it a label so I'll pull this down here and we'll say hair smashing so we've got a UI set up to work with um, let's adjust our script so head over here and um, we need a couple more variables so first of all I'm going to create a list of um, strings so these are going to be the names of our yeah of our hair models or our hair recipes so let's have a public list of string and we will call this hair models lovely and let's quickly initialize that so it's going to be a new list of strings okay so that's that set up I also want a variable um, let's make it private for now so a private uh, int which is going to be the index of our current hair model so we'll say uh, private int and we'll call it current hair okay that looks good right so we've got these variables to work with so let's start making our 
routine. So we'll make a public void and we'll say change change hair. Um, this one I'm going to make it take a bool in and we're going to call this bool plus and the reason I'm doing that I want the same routine to be called by both of my plus and minus buttons. Um, we'll pass a true in if this one's pressed and we'll pass a false in if this one's pressed. Okay, so with that in mind we can say if uh, plus and then we will say current hair goes up by one else we'll say current hair goes down by one now obviously we need to clamp this so let's say current hair equals mathf dot clamp and we'll take in current hair and we'll say the limit we want that to be limited between zero and um, the size of our array so we'll say hair models so hair models dot count and again minus one because the index is always one less than the count and that will mean we can never go above the maximum size of the array and we can never go below the minimum size of the array so let's just save that for now and have a look at our character and what we should see there we go we now have a an array in here so if we look at our hair models uh, handily I've got this open at my wardrobe recipes and you can see male hair one two and three so that's the ones I'm going to have in my list so over here let's actually put four items in there first one I'm going to say none okay so I can take the hair off completely uh, so next we'll have male hair one and let's just copy that and just change these to male hair one male hair two and male hair three so they are the strings of the names of our models that we want to use okay so if we come back in here we now actually want to apply that so the first thing we'll do is check if uh, we've got this none selected so we'll say if current no not current hair if um, hair models and the index will be current hair so if the value we've currently got is equal to uh, none then what we'll do we'll remove anything that is in the hair slot so we'll say avatar dot clear slot and we'll say clear the hair slot that looks good so if it doesn't say none which it should mean it has a proper hair model in there we'll say else avatar dot set slot Hair, comma, and again we could say hair models current hair. Brilliant. So if only I'd spelt that right, that would have been wonderful. So the final thing I need to do is, of course, rebuild my character. So there we go. So that routine should work. Let's just make sure I've got no errors yep that compiles great so we need to hook our um, UI up with this script so this should be pretty straightforward if I go back to my UI let's find my minus button so now I could if we wanted we could come in here and we could subscribe again I'm getting lazy now so I'm going to use the uh, the actual inspector to do it so let's say on click I want um, let's have a look on click I want to say with a character the character creator and let's look at my change hair because this is the minus button I'm not I'm going to send a false in okay and the other one I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to say our character creator uh, let's open up change hair and this one it's the plus button so I'm going to send a true in so this way they're both sending 
they're both calling the same routine but they're identifying themselves with a, a true or a false okay so that fingers crossed if I hit play it should just work let's have a little look plus there we go we're cycling through these lovely hairdos and down goes back down and because I'm clamping it I can't go too far in either direction so again that's pretty straightforward as well that's obviously just hair but you could do the same with uh, default items of clothing with accessories whatever wardrobe items you wanted to use um, again just before I finish with that little control I want to talk about one last thing which is reading uh, what wardrobe item we actually currently have in a slot and again very very similar to what we did up here with reading the skin color we would say avatar now you might think it would be get slot um, unfortunately it isn't <laughs> it is get and there's lots of get wardrobe things but we want get wardrobe item name get wardrobe item name and you tell it which slot you want to get the item from okay again on its own this won't do anything so I'm going to wrap this in a debug log so debug dot log but that should give us a string back of whatever is currently in the hair slot on our character so again when we change hair that should spit out in the console so let's have a little look and when I change my hair again you can see it actually tells us what model is on our Uma so hopefully that is pretty much it with those few bits and bobs we've seen over the last two episodes you should be able to create a pretty comprehensive character creator um, so this skin color we can again do the same thing for eyes for hair um, all sorts of stuff like that so go ahead and make something a bit special with it and in the next episode I'm going to look at saving our characters storing them away somewhere and retrieving them so that way you can have an independent scene to create characters you can save your characters away and in game whenever you load a new scene you can load up your character ready to go okay I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time and once again I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible uh, if you would like to support me feel free to click that link at the end of the video. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.